Today we are going to talk about something very different and interesting at the same time on this channel, so please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in, my name is Angelos and this is my perfume vlog. I'm a Greek fragrance enthusiast aka Greek perfume aficionado and of course if you enjoy what you see, the topics, the videos here, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notifications in order to stay up to date with any future upload. Before I start this video I would like to wish to each one of you Happy New Year, Happy 2020, 2020, you name it. I'm wishing from the bottom of my heart, first of all health, prosperity, happiness, love, whatever you like to be fulfilled and be accomplished in this new year. So as you've seen from the title of this video, today we are going to talk about the ingredients you see mentioned uh, on the labels, on your perfumes, the per your favorite perfumes, the perfumes you buy from a retail store and you see this label with ingredients and you probably wondered in the past what the heck are those ingredients. My sole purpose for this video is not to uh, let's say express my opinion about uh, why these ingredients are mentioned or why are there any limitations which we are going to talk about briefly in the, in, uh, later on this video. But for you to understand and uh, get some information about the ingredients you see mentioned on the labels from the perfumes you buy. So except from the most complicated uh, ingredients that we are going to see in a little bit, uh, there were always been mentioned some other ingredients, some basic ingredients like alcohol, water and fragrance which as you can see I have two bottles from uh, 90, the early 1990s and this one is from 1992 and uh, this is Guerlain Heritage and you can see we have alcohol, fragrance and water and some other stuff which are actually some colorants some additives in order to give a more pleasant color for you to purchase, a little bit more attractive, you know, that kind of stuff. So another one is a photo from Karl Lagerfeld and this one is from 1993, if I'm not mistaken, and you can also see alcohol, fragrance, etc, etc, water. I think, yes, of course, water. So this is something very common because you can see from Fleur de Lalita, for example, from Ducita, I have the box here and you will also see in the first lines aqua, fragrance and water and I'm doing this comparison because these are from the 1990s and these are from the, from the late 2010s so you can see that these ingredients were always being mentioned on the boxes, on the labels. So I will uh, briefly mention a couple of things about what alcohol is this and what uh, water is this and what do we mean uh, with fragrance when you see fragrance or parfum. So first of all alcohol. Alcohol in perfumery we don't use uh, drinkable alcohol because of the taxation uh, the taxation for drinkable alcohol is tremendous. You can see it when you're buying booze or something like that you, you, you can see why it's very expensive and also it's a little bit more harsh, let's say, more dry for the skin. We use some denaturants and we use denatured alcohol. What does it mean, denatured alcohol? We just add some substances, not us, usually some big companies, some big chemical companies, they denature the alcohol and they make it more pleasant, more smooth and of course not drinkable, that's why if, if accidentally you tried some of your fragrances, most of the times it's because these uh, denaturants, these, uh, these additives, we use in this alcohol to make it a little bit more smooth and pleasant and not expensive, not that expensive, uh, they have a bitter taste and one of these denaturants is called Bitrex and the name of course com comes from the bitterness. I have some random boxes here in order to show you most of the stuff you would probably be interested to see. So I grabbed a portrait of a lady and you can see here that you have alcohol denat 39C more specifically SD alcohol denat 39C. What does this mean? This indicates specifically which denaturants we used for this denatured alcohol. So SD alcohol is specially denatured alcohol and 39C 
uh, indicates the specific uh, uh, substances we used for this denaturation. That's it with alcohol. We, you can also see only alcohol denat, which means alcohol denatured. And uh, you will also probably see just alcohol, but trust me, it's always denatured alcohol. And another one you might encounter is SD alcohol 40B. That's it with alcohol, I think I covered the subject. So let's move on to the water, which is more simple uh, than alcohol. The, the water we use here is deionized water. Deionized water means it's a very more purified water and it's actually the same water you are using when you want to iron your clothes. That's it with water as well. So let's move on to the fragrance, to the actual point. So you see mentioned fragrance. After, let's say, the early 2000s, actually 1999, but it was implicated in the early 2000s, you would see that this list of ingredients were was bigger and bigger and bigger. What does this mean? When you see fragrance or parfum, mentioned on the box, on the label, here, okay. So when you see fragrance, it's the actual formula, the concentrate of the fragrance, the formula of the fragrance, the, the thing you smell. So this fragrance is consisting of many materials. Sometimes it's, let's say, 15, 20, some more simple formulas, but we can go up to, let's say, 300 ingredients. So these ingredients, either naturals or synthetic ingredients, uh, include some include some allergens. So in the late 90s, early 2000s, in the European Union, they gathered all together and uh, they had a committee, the scientific committee for cosmetics and non-food products, and the abbreviation is SCCNFP. They decided that they had, if if a brand wanted to sell in a retail store to consumers in a physical retail, retail stores in European Union, they had to mention some allergens because they realized that some ingredients, either synthetic or naturals, they include some allergens. So these allergens had to be specified and indicated on the labels, on the boxes, because people who might be a little bit more sensitive and had some allergic reactions to some ingredients had to be mentioned, these ingredients had to be mentioned in order to prevent any, let's say, frustration or allergic reaction. This committee also uh, collaborated with uh, IFRA, you know IFRA, this is International Fragrances Association, so they had, IFRA represents actually the fragrance industry, so they had to collaborate and discuss and evaluate so they could define which is also definitely allergen or which is let's say possibly an allergen and when I'm saying allergen it's not that everyone is going to use this fragrance will have allergic reaction like even for 0.5 or 1% of the total uh, number of the consumers that might buy this fragrance had to be warned. I will obviously not cover the whole 26 uh, ingredients in this video so if you find this video interesting let me know if Probably I will create another part of this video and uh, I will cover the most uh, commonly encountered and let me tell you another thing that some of these ingredients are not always super smelly, they, are not, they don't have very, very distinctive smell, some of them don't actually smell at all, some of them are used as, uh, let's say sometimes as, uh, some, as, as preservatives or they have some uh, anti, let's say, oxidation or antimicrobial uh, use. Also, sometimes they prevent the formula and the, some other uh, very sensitive ingredients from uh, UV rays and the sunlight and all this kind of stuff. One of the most important and the, one of the most commonly encountered ingredients uh, from this uh, list is uh, geraniol or geraniol. And uh, you probably heard me talking about this ingredient many times. You can see it somewhere here. Uh, here. So geraniol, what is geraniol? Geraniol is something that we can find in natural uh, essential oils or absolutes and it's a, a molecule that we can also create in the lab. So we, you can have geraniol while using a natural ingredient, let's say a essential ro rose oil or a rose absolute or geranium essential oil for example and also you can find synthetic geraniol which is created in the lab from the scratch from the chemist of course geraniol is very important and very commonly encountered because geraniol as i told you is always 
present in very very high percentage in rose oils I think it's from 6 to 23 percent in a rose oil it's crazy uh, also in geranium essential oil uh, you can find in palma rosa essential oil you can find it in jasmine absolute uh, jasmine oils and in so many other stuff I really can't remember everything because literally in everything that it's floral sometimes you can find geraniol so geraniol does it smell at all yes it smells and it smells very pleasant so i have geraniol here from my from my raw materials i use from my own perfumes and he here is geraniol and uh, let's smell it again yes it's it's very pleasant it's like it smells like spicy rose geranium with citronella with that kind of stuff it's that kind of smell and trust me many perfumers use it either when they are using the real the natural essential oils or while they use it directly synthetic in the formula because it blends the other spices and floral but geranium is characterized as a little bit allergen so it has to be mentioned when it's present in this and the formulas it has to be mentioned in uh, on the labels uh, of the boxes of the perfumes you are buying so we stay in the let's say rose area rose geranium area so we have citronellol so what is citronellol citronellol is as you can probably imagine from the name of this ingredient it's something like very close to the citronella the smell of the citronella of this let's say uh, bug repellent repellent uh, plant I'm sure most of you have smelled citronella, especially when if you are living in places that you are suffering from mosquitoes, you definitely use some, let's say, citronella candles. So you are familiar, I guess, from the citronel citronella smell. And citronellol is like 90% smell of citronella. So it's very, pre of course, it's very present present in citronella, but also it's present in rose oil. Very, very, the percentage of citronellol in rose oil is very big so if you have a rose very rosy uh, fragrance you can see you will definitely see citronellol and and geraniol as i mentioned before mentioned on the label trust me another ingredient very important and very very commonly encountered is linalol and linalol this is the ingredient and linalol is present in very high percentages in the essential oils of lavender and rosewood so let's say imagine a little bit combining lavender with rosewood and you have the smell of linalol i can't explain it better it's a little bit let's say mildly woody and a little bit herbal it's an incredible smell and very very important very very important in perfumery we use it either as a synthetic linalol or as a natural lina uh, linalol and natural linalol I haven't uh, written here properly in my ingredients. Natural linalol, you can also see it as whole wood. And either the chemists retrieve it from natural essential oils or they recreate it again in the lab. And let me tell you something. When you are buying a natural isolate, it's sometimes even 10, ten times more expensive than the synthetic, synthetically created isolate so that's why uh, when you are buying perfumes from natural perfumery and they are using linalol for example but they are using natural linalol that's why the formula is more expensive because they are using the expensive type of linalol or other isolates another one extremely highly encountered Sorry, I have portrait of a lady. It's the most easy to grab from all these bo boxes I have here. So, let's see. Of course, there is Eugenol. Here it is. Eugenol. Another ingredient which I'm sure you will find it in most of the boxes on the labels. Eugenol, so Eugenol is the smell of cloves because Eugenol is present like in huge percentages in. Uh, uh, clove bud essential oil so the smell of fusion oil is actually the smell of clove bud but don't get me wrong clove, clove bud is contains like uh, I don't remember how many ingredients from this uh, gas chromatography report 
and of course you have some more complexity as you have in most of the natural essential oils because usually oil is just a molecule from the whole let's say structure of clove bud so that's why they have very similar smell because the percentage of fusion oil in clove bud essential oil is like huge and at the same time clove bud is a little bit more complex has its own character because it's a very complex big let's say a connection of a formula of many molecules in the nature present in some spices and some flowers as well but the most characteristic the, the thing that I can say so you can understand the smell of usual is clove bud honestly so we have here clove bud essential oil and you also have two you might see two types of uh, usual either usual or ISO usual here it is so both of them are considered as allergens so if they are present even in minuscule quantities percentages in the fragrance formula they have to be mentioned for the reasons I explained before and because I don't want this video to be like a huge video uh, I will cover two more ingredients which are actually the only ones that uh, are totally synthetic ingredients you can find them in the nature one of the ingredients you probably seen like many times on the labels uh, from the perfumes you purchase is alpha isomethyl ionone and alpha isomethyl ionone is very important ingredient it's actually the ingredient that is giving this violet smell i will show you some fragrances that have alpha isomethyl ionone and it's very present there so you can actually detect it So one of them is the infamous Yves Saint Laurent M7. It's a very pleasant mixture of orris butter and violets. It's a little bit powdery, it's a little bit musky as well. Sometimes a little bit get some woody nuances. So imagine a combination of orris butter, violets, muskiness and powderiness and a little bit of woodiness in the background some mustiness sometimes sometimes i get it because it's a very complex synthetic ingredient trust me it's not very let's say straightforward that smell and that's it when you see the pyramid i mean on fragrantica or base notes or whatever or parfumo and you will see when you see violets or oris or iris it's definitely there, trust me. Alpha isomethylionol is also present here in Portrait of a Lady. I'm not promoting pro uh, Portrait of a Lady by all means, but I have this box very easy to grab here. So you he see alpha isomethylionol. So last but not least, totally uh, synthetic ingredient. You can find it in the nature. The name of this ingredient is like huge. So I will say that the big name, the abbreviation, and the copyrighted name to be honest from IFF which most of the perfumers use nowadays so this ingredient is called hydroxy isomethyl 3 cyclohexen carboxaldehyde <laughs> it's a big name I know uh, the abbreviation is HICC and as I told you the patented the copyrighted name from IFF is Liral and the limitation of the use of Liral is actually the reason of the big reformulations that happened after 2014 because after 2014 it was very highly restricted and limited in the formulas the percentage which you would uh, you could use in the total concentrate on the the finished product of the of the formula of the perfume i will show you one of these fragrances that was discontinued unfortunately in my honest opinion because of the limitation of liral and it was very 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 present in this fragrance so they had to discontinue because I think reformulation was not an option the smell would be totally different and this is none other than Escada Magnetism for men and you can see it first in the first second line or third line after the fragrance aqua and uh, alcohol you have this big 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 name which refers to Liral, the hydroisoxyl 3 cycloexane carboxaldehyde. 
So this, as I told you, this is very important, very musky, very, very, very important. Uh, imagine something very potent, musky, and lily of the valley, white floral smell. Clean, but very important. You, that's why you have in uh, Scada Magnetism, you have that huge longevity, huge longevity, because of the presence in big percentages of HICC, the big name. So that's it with the video, with the ingredients from the labels on the perfume, on the boxes you see from the perfumes you purchase and maybe you wondered at some time what are these ingredients, what do they mean, do they smell, where do we find these ingredients. I hope this video helped you to understand a couple of things, to learn a couple of things. I hope it wasn't so technical because trust me, I, I tried a couple of times to I create this video again in the past, but I failed because it was totally technical. I'm not a chemist. I have a degree in electrical engineering, but I've done so many classes in chemistry in university and before that. I also study a lot about the materials because, and I made, and I did some uh, private classes in perfumery because I create my own perfumes. So all this info came after research, after things I know, things I use every day for my formulas, and I hope it helped. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to create another video for other allergens or other ingredients. Thanks again for stopping by, thanks for watching the video if you are still here and of course till the next one. Cheers!